bit of a complicated one today, but it's going to be a little short because there aren't a lot of examples we can go through. There's just so much variation in this position. So I'm going to break it down a bit and then give some tips to go through it at the end. So if you've worried about round 16 players, round 19 wing fullbacks, things like that, I'll be going through solutions to those rather than a full team because there's just so many ways through duels especially that you can come up with um, a perfect origin plan, particularly with um, guys like Lemuelu and Bird maybe even being used up in second row and things like that. So starting off, there seems to be quite a few options you can use through the origin period. You could even use Edwards for something in round 14 instead of going for somebody like uh, Kiraz or something like that. There's a lot of ways you can go about it. So some of these players are center only or rather not center wing fullback like Manu. Manu is probably the only one that's relevant that you really want to have through that period. And that's why I've highlighted him here. He's on a lot of people's chopping blocks this week as a sell. I personally like holding him just because he's so valuable with that duel and he plays tough round 16. Sebastian Chris owners, you know who you are. Um, he's also pretty useful moving around. That could help you a lot, but you'll have to potentially hold on to him for longer if you want to make use of that, given that he's had a bit of a form slip recently. So Bird especially, nearly all of us have Bird now, he's fantastic, but we have to look for the round 16 buy, and your Billy Smiths, your Manus, Alan Mottis, if some, if people still have him, um, and Will Penasini cover that. Lamuelu, same problem, also plays round 20, which is great. If you have both of them, that might start to become a problem, and that would be the scenario that you hold a Manu or buy Billy Smith and do things like that. So moving down, we have Tass. He's a sneaky one. I think he might get a bit of a bump with Campbell Graham and Latrell out. They'll go left side, strong side more, um, considering they've been going right a lot this year. They'll get more ball and potentially more scores, um, more ceiling scores while the others are out. So he's a pot option. He's definitely not safe by any uh, example, especially with him already being 500k or so, but he's not the worst option. Campbell Graham, fantastic for your team so far, but he's going to be really nasty to hold through Origin when he misses at least four if he plays Origin, which I expect he, he should. He's absolutely fantastic this year. With so many other good 45-plus average options this year, Bird, Lemuelu, maybe Penasini, Joey Manu, we're just spoiled for choice, really, so I really think Graham would be a sell in round 13, or round 16 at the very latest, given he misses all of these clustered late ones, and then the round 26 as well. So this is what we're all struggling with currently. A lot of us have Miller, who's in a form slump. A lot of us have Teddy. I would sell Teddy, whether it's now or round 13. He just doesn't look like the same um, keeper we have seen in the past. I haven't included him in my buy planning here. I have included Latrell because he's just an elite gun, unlike Teddy. He's a little bit like Hines in the other video. You would keep him through the origin period despite how much he misses. Just because he's so expensive and so hard to get back into your team, if you do sell him, he'll be incredibly valuable. And maybe you trade him out in that head-to-head -head grand final week in round 26, but until then, I really wouldn't be looking to get him out. Walsh, though, I probably would if he's going to play Origin. There's a lot of others that are closer to Walsh than now. Walsh is still one of the better ones, and he only misses origin weeks on this buy, so he's better to hold than Latrell, but he's still he's still not amazing. Will Tarlow, good cover for around 16, 19, expensive. The best one that I'm really looking forward to is probably Jacob Kiraz in round 14. He's bottomed out now at about 500k or a little bit less after a couple of injury affected scores and probably being rushed back a little bit too early and a bit underdone, but I think by round 14, especially after a week to really get himself right, he'll be right for the picking and fix up a lot of those late season, uh, late origin issues we have. Miller is fantastic for cover, but is not fantastic for points. One big thing I found out this week is that he plays, he doesn't get as many stats when Ponga's there. Ponga pinches about 50 run meters off Miller, and even though he's kicking goals, Miller averages 20 less, 20 less when Ponga is in the team. However, after that barnstorming performance last week, we probably expect Ponga to play Origin, 
So do you sacrifice a little bit of a point, uh, a little bit of a price drop for really good points in round 13 or don't sell them in round 14 and have really good points in round 16 as well, maybe a little bit more price drop. I think it depends on how many round 16 players you have or plan to have. If you sell Manu, it's harder to sell Miller, things like that. And also how many round 14 guys you have. Both Miller and Garrick have the round 14 buy. It might be a little tough to carry both um, past and into 14. Drinkwater's good. He hasn't been spectacular. He dropped to mid-30s last week, but if he's in your team, he'll do the job and he'll be in there at least until round 16, given that he's in the fullback position and Cowboys seem to be coming good a little bit, so he, no problems with him. Weeks, I used to think he was really nice cover, but Turbo just doesn't look it this year and when Weeks did have an opportunity at fullback, he scored 20s. So I really don't think Weeks is a very good option anymore and in all honesty, I think Turbo still might be picked for Origin 1, but I don't think he'll be there um, past that. I think they'll have to drop him or maybe they drop him for Origin 1 when he's not fit and getting back later. Either way, Weeks isn't going to get both of these, I'm pretty sure, and could be out of the team plenty of these. So I don't really consider him an option anymore. And if you have him, I would trade him to somebody like Oluapu or Burbo this week. Oh, I forgot to put Burbo in this little list here, but he still works quite well for the centers. He's sort of in the bird Lemuelu, except he plays round 16 and doesn't play round 19. So we'll go through those scenarios now. A lot of us have bird, a fair chunk of us also have Lemuelu. That means we're going to be struggling a little bit in centers for round 16, especially if we sell Manu. So I would probably hold Manu in that case because he's going to be very valuable for the wing fullback and centre in round 16 and by Billy Smith in that case. If you are a Bird Lemuel owner, you're going to need some backup. Billy Smith's going well, making some good cash. If you plan to sell Manu, I would sell him straight to Billy Smith in this situation so that you're going to miss that round 13, but you're not adding, you're not adding another one. You're just basically replacing that for a different player. Alternatively, if you're struggling for round 13 centers and you don't have one or both of these, the answer is pretty simple. You sell Manu to one of those guys. You might sell him also to Will Penasini or Tass, as I was talking about earlier, but it's pretty simple. These are sort of polar opposites. If you have these, you're set for round 13. If you don't, you're going to be struggling and you probably want to get one of them in. But if you don't have one, you've got a little bit more flexibility than if you have this and you can have a couple more options in guys like Tass and Penasini as well, or potentially Burbo. I don't mind him particularly because of the time frame that all of the other Manly Fords are out. Six weeks for most of them, which is really handy, but be warned, Ben Trevojevic has historically been a utility and often on the fringes of the team at best, so if something goes wrong, it's not completely unexpected. So I would probably give him a look this week, given that his break even still mid 20s, but he looks a pretty good solution to a lot of our problems as well and solves around 13. So following on for that, if you have Burbo as well, you might start to run into the problem of too many knights, eels, and seagulls. Why is that a problem? They all have the round 14 buy. So all of these guys are going to be missing from your team. So if you've got um, Will Penasini, Lachlan Miller, um, Garrick, Burbo, all of those are going to be gone. You really need to limit how many of those you get at once. It's really tempting to go hard because they all play round 13 and most of them play round 16 as well. But that's the price you're going to have to pay. If you'd stock up on one to fix the other, you're going to lose out in round 14. So if you don't have... Um, if you don't have too many Eels Knights players, you can afford to bring in guys like Garrick a bit more easily. I'm thinking of doing it this week for Teddy. Might do it next week, but I think I'm probably going to go ahead. If you do have too many, I would miss out on one of Garrick or Burbo or Penasini until later on, probably after round 14 in round 15 or directly in round 16 for somebody like Penasini. That's my plan at the moment. I've got Bird and Lemuelu for round 13 good chance that I get Will Penasini for round 16 and beyond. 
Another way is if you have a couple of other players just in other positions, not even in center wing fullback. Cowboys and South players are pretty good. You've got um, Alex Johnston. You've got um, you've got Tass. You've got Drinkwater. All those guys are going to be options that play round 13 and also play round 14. Most of these guys already do. You just have to watch out. You don't stock up on too many of these at once because you do need to fill a full 17 in round 14. If you have a guy who doesn't back up, if Cleary for some reason gets a little bit of a niggle in origin or just doesn't back up because Penrith are going really well, if you have five or six Eels, Knights, Seagulls already, you're going to be playing quite a few down in that round 14 week. So next one, moving on, Roosters Enthusiasts. I know there aren't too many out there, but if you have an extra rooster to most, if you have a Nat Butcher or a Su'ali'i, it's time to get rid of them, sadly. They don't play round 13. You're going to be struggling big time if you have more than two or three of them. That's why I'm so big on selling Tedesco. He's going to miss Origin anyway, but round 13 buy. If you have Cheese, Tedesco, Manu, and want to bring in Billy Smith, I think you have to sell one of Tedesco and Manu to bring in Billy Smith. So you have to limit them because they don't play round 19 either and you're just going to be shooting yourself in the foot if you've got like four of them, um, especially because they're so relevant in just these two important positions. So Roosters are really great for round 16, but what if you decided to sell Tedesco and Marnie? What if you don't have many Roosters and you don't have anybody left around 16? Because Bird, Lemuelu, Walsh, Johnston, Miller, if you've sold Miller... They're all going to be gone from your team. So in that situation, I would hold Manu. If you're struggling, you don't have many of those guys, Manu does. It's a lot easier to hold him in that case. And probably my favorite planned buy coming up is to buy Jacob Kiraz in round 14. He plays round 16 and round 19. And he's going to be bottomed out at about 500k or just below. So he also fixes round 19 up a little bit. And... Roosters don't play around 19. So you've got to look for additional solutions as well. So if you have Hayes Perham, you could probably hold him more. And you have other options like Mulatalo, Sioni Katoa from the Sharks, depending on how their price is and their form. Sioni Katoa is actually pretty cheap at the moment for what he can get to. Mulatalo generally scores well um, when the Sharks are winning. He's going pretty well this year, but he is um, 600 and something already. Alex Johnston also fixes this, but uh, you probably will have wanted to seen him, seen something from him um, before then. So I wouldn't go jumping on straight away, given what he's done so far. I'm hopeful that he goes well against the Eels because he scored three consecutive hat tricks um, in Indigenous round. But I mean, that's just a stat. There's no guarantee it happens. And so the last scenario, if none of these for some reason, apply to you. You've got a team, it's your first year, you're a bit down in the dumps, your team value is sitting around like 11 and a half, 12 million. You've got no money to get all these expensive players. Well, shockingly, the answer is don't spend that money on those players. You might have to sacrifice a few points, buy Billy Smith, Johnston, all the cheap guys who have the ability to make that money. 